All right, test, 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 test. <clears throat> Well, a hello and a yo-yo-yo to you. Yo, That's right. Yo, Merry Christmas. Yo. Convincing idiots. Segment number three is back. I'm Millennial Nick, along with my very happy helpers, Gen X Brian and Zennial Dean. We are here for our third and final segment this evening. It is the Christmas season. Gentlemen, there's been many mm. uh, fantastic Christmas classics. If you would like to know which ones of those that we enjoy the most, you can go find our Mount Rushmore picks in years past. I think you know which ones round them out. Um, but uh, if you would like to hear... It's turbo time, as you just said. If you would like to hear some of the newer editions, uh, perhaps. You know, there have been a lot of Christmas classics. Many, uh, you know, beloved... A lot of part of Christmas tradition is is rewatching old movies, listening to Christmas songs. I don't know about you, you know, we've done we even did one on classic Christmas music. You know, Bing Crosby for many is yes. the song is the sound well, of Christmas. Week we just did Christmas commercials. Yeah, absolutely, we did That's Christmas right. commercials exactly. But there's been a lot of good content uh, in the last you know decade or so and and beyond. But new Christmas content is always pumping out. So uh, why not shed a little spotlight on that, gentlemen? This evening we are going to discuss uh, some of our favorite Christmas and least favorite Christmas content over the past, you know, 10 years or so. We'll say that's that's the benchmark for recent. So um, why don't we start with you, Brian? What's uh, Do you want to start with least? What, what we don't like, what we do like? How do you want to do this? Um... Yeah, we'll, st- we'll talk about stuff we'd like first. How about that? Mm-hmm. We'll start there. Okay. 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 So some newer stuff that's uh, good. I uh, from twenty twenty two on Disney Plus. The how about the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special? So yep, it's almost it's rock solid. Yeah, James, <laughs> James Gunn, one of the you know, of course, he made the Guardians three movie, but he he directs the last couple of things he did with Guardians of the Galaxy. Kevin Bacon is in this thing, so they're just trying to... <laughs> you can't go wrong with Kevin Bacon. Yeah, I mean, the Guardians, basically, the premises are trying to give Peter Quill the, the best Christmas gift ever, and they think it should be Kevin Bacon. It's kind of funny. They kind of misinterpret what he's what he's uh, looking for. Just great. I mean, just the, the whole episode, it gets a, it's a quick watch. Everybody's there. Uh, it's... Definitely has a lot of warm moments and hilarious like 35, moments 40 as well. minutes, right? I mean, it, it, yeah, say, just, I mean, it's such yeah, a, it's, it's yeah. under an hour. Can I just complain about it? Sure. Over, I you dare agree, you to you try. Agree, it's Go one ahead. of the best, but yeah, what, what don't you like about My it? My complaint about that movie is that that Kevin Bacon Christmas song isn't on the fucking radio right now. Yeah, it's good. How is that not in rotation on, on Christmas stations? That song is awesome. And yeah. that that holiday special, that Christmas episode is awesome. So, yeah, there yeah. you go. Uh, the Kevin Bacon's, is it about Kevin Bacon, the song? No, it, it, it's a, it's a you cri- just mean, original Christmas I don't Christmas know song. what Christmas, the one that, yeah. that plays at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm glad you end. said that. Yes, uh, because I wrote that down as well, not only the special, but the song, because I'm like, it has mm-hmm. it all. It's awesome. Like, the song is hilarious, because it's, you know, people from an alien planet singing about what Christmas is, and they don't really know what Christmas is, but Christmas time is here and they're they're you know reflecting on their rendition of what they perceive right this like it's earth american song. christmas to be it should be and part it's of... all fucked up and wrong and it's hilarious yeah yeah mm-hmm. yep there you yep. go that's Good all my that's all point. my all my list top 5 yep yep all right well since there's a law here i guess i'm going to go <laughs> um i have the human one on law. my list Dean goes next. <laughs> this is my nickname in high school. Um, my uh, number one on my list is, of course, Violent Night. Mm, yes. it, is a, it is a Christmas classic, even though it was out last year. Um, it was like uh, Brian and I were talking about the other day, is, is it's not only, you know, 
the action's fun, the kills are fun, but it's got actual heart to it. It it is a Christmas movie. It it does have uh that sensibility of the that other Christmas movies have. And uh it 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 really rounds it out, I think. So mm-hmm. it, Violent Night uh, is number one on my list. Nikolai? Fantastic. Um, I have, um, so I also had Guardians and everything, but like uh, the next one I had down was uh, The Christmas Chronicles with, with Kurt Russell. Mm, um, yes. We've discussed this in, in past episodes, but it is very recent. And um, the, the first one, uh, specifically, this, they made a second I, one as well. Yeah. I didn't enjoy the second the one, first one, Nick. Yeah, yeah, but the first one really heartfelt. Really, yep. uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm not going to lie to you. A, a tear welled up in my eye when he gets the ornament at the end with his dad, who you know was a firefighter, passed away, and they covered that in the beginning. Um, just a beautifully done movie. We've talked about it before. Kurt Russell, Santa Claus. You can't go wrong. He's arguably one of the best Santa Clauses, just in that in that appearance alone. Um, yeah, just really well done. A fun movie, and it's one of the ones now. It has become a classic. I have to watch it every year, like you know, along with Jingle All the Way and The Year Without a Santa Claus and all that stuff. It, I have to see it at Christmas time, and it's very recent. So that's really saying a lot that it's in that heavy of a rotation. So um, yeah, The Christmas Chronicles for me. Very Brian. good. Well, I mean, I, I I'll just carry on with uh, Christmas crap was on my list as well. Nick's so Christmas Chronicles, everything you said, I, I agree. And, you know, the added touch was certainly Goldie Hawn being Mrs. Claus was nice. It probably, uh, you know, just one of the best looking modern versions of Santa Claus was Kurt Russell. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know for sure, but it looked like anyway, it looked like his beard was natural and his hair. I, it, the whole look about him was cool. I, I, yeah. I mean, what you guys think? Uh, in that uh, hateful eight, his he had the same look. Yeah, just he was just dirtier, right? So, so I maybe think, they I think made it around the same time hair. or something. Yeah. yeah, so could always grow a solid. I mean, good head of hair, good solid beard. I mean, the yeah. thing well, back yeah, in the I, fucking I, the, what, I, early eighties, like that's true. Was, yeah. I mean, he always had that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, yeah, the, the beard there. and hair is his. Whether how white it is, I don't know. But I'm yeah. I, the 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 beard and hair is his. Yeah. I, I like the, the. I would imagine it's authentic. Like, Fuck, he's the guy's like what, late fifties, early sixties. I shit. I don't know how old is Kurt Russell. Mid sixties, almost into his. 70s. You think? Yeah. Really? Damn. Um, That's insane. I mean, he was in a movie with John Wayne uh, when he was a kid. Um, no, Ooh, also I was like seventy-two the, years of age. God damn. Yeah, there you go. yeah. I mean, motherfucker looks good for seventy-two. Holy yeah. shit! I'll be so lucky. Yeah, he does. Shit, yeah. But I like wow. that they that some of the the they mixed uh the Santa Claus lore and, mm-hmm. and then added some stuff to it. Like the the elf elven uh language. Yeah, yeah. right. And the, the explanation of how he gets, you know, jumps from chimney to chimney. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um yeah. And like the the, the leather vest <laughs> under mm-hmm. the suit. Like he is the coolest Santa Claus. Oh, for uh, sure. In films, yep. so, and I'm I only am am going on about it because that is also on my list. So mm-hmm. very good, yeah, excellent. That's my number two, actually. Okay, yes. Nick, but, for what yeah. else you got? Uh, well, that was do yeah. I go again? Yeah, because it, well, we it was on Brian. Just, we just, oh, we yeah, see, we're race, just so passing a, through. Okay, and since yep. you cool. all yep. had it on, you know, instead of going out of order, I just sure. And it, actually, uh, it was my number two. So. Okay, I'll throw it. I'll throw it off of of uh, visual for a minute. Uh, my favorite thing, and I don't even know if I'm within within the uh, the parameters of a ten year range, but this is recent. Okay, we've discussed Christmas music before. We like uh, Frank Sinatra. Elvis has been noted as one of the greats uh, with Christmas music. Michael Bublé is the voice of Christmas in the modern day to me. Hmm. So Michael Bublé in Christmas music. That's on my list. Michael Bublé can have full rights to all of Christmas music, and I'd be fucking fine with it. Yeah, I'd miss my Bing Crosby and my Elvis Presley, but goddamn, like, and and you know Frank Sinatra, but like you're getting that. But like Michael Bublé is Christmas. It so much to the point that I almost sometimes forget he's not exclusively a Christmas artist. <laughs> like that, I was like, oh yeah, Michael well, Bublé like has like Bing Crosby regular wasn't ass a song. Christmas artist. Right. Bing yeah. Oh, no, for sure. Was an actual crew right. or singer. Yeah, but man, Michael Bublé just does it so goddamn well. 
uh, Vancouver zone. I love me some Michael Bublé, and I love nothing more that he's the first one I turn on now. Like, I mean, it's, and it's no disrespect to any of the classics, but <laughs> no, I'm Michael, the first one you turn on. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Michael Bublé at Christmas time is just like, it's everything, man. So yeah, in, in recent, it certainly, uh, takes the cake in, in the music category, but Michael Bublé at Christmas time, man, it's just, I am in the spirit when Michael Bublé's voice hits and it's Christmas time, that snow has fallen. I'm there. Brian. Excellent. Uh, let's see what's next on my list here. Well, I'll, I'll just elaborate briefly since it's been another overlap. Uh, Dean, Violent Night also made my list. I don't even oh, talked good. about this last week. As, uh, Allie uh, and Marlo, her daughter, had not seen it. We all watched it after a Christmassy night out. We all loved it. And yeah, I'm going to have to watch this movie because it comes need- up a lot on our podcast. And like, yeah. I didn't, you know, I'm like, I don't think it's for me. I, it's, you know, it's like an airplane Nick. thing. I'm like, I think I know what it is, and I don't think it's for me. But don't but go in looking for I'm it to be curious. like this, this, this cinematic masterpiece. It is supposed to be um, violent and campy, and and yeah, and all of that. But it has humor and heart to it. Okay, I want to. Well, yeah, it's the first time I've heard somebody like one of you guys be like, "Oh, it's got heart to it." It's got. So I want to see. Yes. I'm now. I, my my. Uh, uh, curiosity has has been uh, sparked here, so I'm interested. Yeah, when you see Santa Claus swinging around a a sledgehammer, hitting people with it, I right. mean, come on. That's, and I, I don't, like I don't know his what else or, you need. it tells us the origin for him is he's a like a Viking type thing. Yeah. Like it's, are we it's along cool. the lines of Krampus with this? Is it like are we in no. this vein? No, 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 no. no. It's no much Kramp- better than that. Krampus was a little bit campier. Little yeah. more horror. This okay. is, this is. I don't even know like what movie you compare to. It's almost. I think somebody <sighs> uh, wrote that one time. I think I read on Twitter that it's a mix between Home Alone and Die Hard, yeah. <laughs> with a Christmas movie. Okay. Yeah, like Rambo Three is, it, it, but it's Santa Claus sort yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Just the, check the it kills out. Kills aren't. Campy, they're, they're they're extravagant, but they're not mm-hmm. campy. Okay, no, no, there's some. <laughs> yeah, there it's some wild shit going on. It's it's pretty, it's there's, there's a few pretty violent, like 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 you said, almost like the opening scene when you meet Santa, violence. he's sitting at a bar drunk. Like it, yeah, and and David, what's his name? What what is the the, the actor's name? Brian, uh, David, the guy from Stranger Things. Is yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he uh, does it, so fucking well. I mean, he, he's just a cool dude. Like it, it's a fantastic part for him. David Harbor as Santa. Harbor, yeah, that's right. Yeah, fantastic. And John Lugosi. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, is that <laughs> a Beverly <laughs> D'Angelo? Is he going? Yeah, yep. John Leguizamo's in it. Is he? Really? He's the bad yes. guy. Yeah, he's, he's the main. Bad, bad he's the main guy. bad guy. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's is he the terrific. clown. No, but he's like, you solid get, though. He's really, get, really yeah, good. Yeah, well, there's nothing he can't do, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure. Everything he does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. De- Nick, you definitely should uh, take a look. From Miss Chi-Chi, the clown, and Sid the sloth. I yeah, I, w- yeah. I would be I would be willing to check it out. There you go. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna go, and and I don't think uh, uh, Nick's point was uh, uh, done enough. So I'm gonna go back to Michael Bublé. Um, yeah, there you go. <clears throat> but I, I'm going. You to have Michael Bublé on your list. Yes, I do. Do you actually? Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Actually, um, I, I'll do it one more on this. In the same thing, it's one thing I wrote down anything, anything Christmas by Josh Groban and Michael Bublé. I'm combining okay. those two. Okay, um, yeah, they are. Um, what's the What's the big What's the uh, It's not Feliz Navidad, but it's there. It's a. It's something that's another language. What's the big Josh Groban one that? Uh, was it the the, 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 oh, the oh holy not uh, the, oh, holy not a holy night but um you know what I'm talking about it's the German one in... right oh. I don't know um oh, me, bomb is, them... is like a Christmas tree but like that's ger- but like uh Believe there's something that Groban does not that one that's no it's something that Josh Groban does that oh, okay. is like this big epic Christmas fucking thing sorry I mean, but go that on, I'll guy's voice. <laughs> Uh, Josh Groban's voice is just insane, and he, I, when he does "Oh Holy Night," which is my favorite Christmas song, 
Um, it's just, it's just the best way I can say it's fucking haunting. Like it, it's so mm. good. So yeah, I have written anything Christmas by Josh Groban and Michael Bublé. Nick, excellent. Maybe I was thinking of Ave Maria, but in my head, the song was Noel. Like Ave mm, Maria okay. is probably the song title I was thinking. Of. It's like it's, but no, like no, no. Uh, I've, I think... I've heard him. I've heard Josh Groban do Ave Maria. Yeah, it's Noel fantastic. is the one that I'm thinking of. The Noel, Noel. No, yeah, it's like really well done. That's Oh Holy Night. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That, that, starts he does. Night. Yeah. Other than Nat King Cole, it's 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 my favorite uh, rendition of that song. Yeah. All right, good pick. Yeah, Nikolai. Oh, uh, is it my turn? Shit. Yep. Uh, okay. Next up, um, the Family Guy Christmas episode. I think I've talked about this on this podcast before as well, but <laughs> it is such a great modern day cynical take on what Christmas is or what Christmas you know has become. Um, you know, in, in our culture. Um, it's just fantastic. Are you both familiar with the Christmas episode? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, it's where, you know, they write a letter to Santa Claus, and then they, like, you know, they go to the North Pole to oh, deliver yeah. it themselves, and then when they get there, they find that the North Pole is not this magical, wonderful place that they all thought. In fact, it's this rundown, polluted factory, like, mm-hmm. with... You know, and like Santa's just exhausted, and he was like, "Yeah, he's like, this was a fine thing to do." When holy, um, holy fucking shit! Um, How's that hockey sorry. game going? Holy fuck! Um, <laughs> I'm astounded right now. Sorry, I have to now. I have to just real quick. The Leafs were playing tonight. I turned the game off after the second period because they were down five to nothing. They oh, yeah. came back yeah. and tied it five to five in the third period. Wow! And went to overtime and lost six to five. But like, holy That's shit! Still they impressive. still get a point. That, like, I was I had no idea that the score turned into that. Uh. By the time I turned it off, they were getting absolutely mm-hmm. destroyed. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm not even going to bother. Sorry. Anyway, um, Seth, that will <clears throat> look up the hockey scores from that day, and it'll make sense. Uh, December fourteenth. No, uh, the yeah. the uh, <laughs> he'll be listening to this in June. Um, yes. In in. Uh, no, the the Family Guy Christmas episode, yeah, like I said, it's it's just got such a good modern day take on that. And then like so they find it's all this it's just too much for Santa and everyone in the North Pole to handle. So I mean, and the the elves are just these inbred creatures that are all just yeah. kind of run into the ground and then like when the other ones just get so dumb and die they walk into the snow and die off and the reindeers only feast on their corpses and like that's you know, they're these it's just hilarious. And then Brian and Stewie take it upon themselves to deliver Santa's gift to try to help out. And they realize how impossible it is and hilarity ensues. But it's just, it's so ridiculous. And uh, has Carter seen the family guy? We were talking, I don't know if it was on air or off, but has Carter, newly into family guy, seen the Christmas episode? Because I, I feel like he know. absolutely I should. I, I don't know. I'll have to ask him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the family guy Christmas episode specifically is just one that I love watching this time of year it's it's just so ridiculous and over the top um but uh yep that's the next one for me brian go ahead pretty good excellent these are again this is not out this is a quick sidebar the american dad christmas episode there's several ones as well by the way you can find american dad on hulu some excellent excellent christmas episodes as well with him with american dad with Santa and all that, you, you know, over the top violent ones and different ones. So good stuff there too. Uh, next one on my list is a newer one. This is from 2021 and you can find this on streaming eight bit Christmas. I, I mentioned this before on prior episodes here, Neil Patrick Harris, June, Diane Raphael, uh, Steve Zahn, David Cross. So Neil Patrick Harris, uh, is reminiscing when he was a child in the 80s. He wanted a Nintendo gaming system. He's really wanting that from his parents and all that. And it shows him, brings his young daughter into his parents' house to visit or something like that. He does have a Nintendo, and he kind of recalls the story when he was a kid. And it really turns into something really very warm uh, and touching with you know his relationship with his dad, Um just real. It's a, just a solid, solid 
it's a, a Christmas movie, family oriented Christmas movie. Go check this out. I think it's on it's a Netflix. No, maybe it's on Prime. Or it could be Mac. No, it is. I have it right in front of me. Max. There you go. It's on Max. HBO Max. You can check it out there. So if you have a, 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 a subscription there, check that out this season. It's like an hour, 37 minutes. Very easy watch. Solid. One of the best newer Christmas movies by far that really should make its way into your annual holiday movie rotation. 8-Bit Christmas. I saw mm-hmm. that pop up the other day, and I was like, I couldn't remember... That one and Office Christmas Party, I think it is called. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody at my work was telling me that they like that movie. So I was like, that I'd never seen Office Christmas Party, but 8 Bit Christmas popped up and I was trying to think if that was it. So both of those yep. I have not seen and, and need to need to take a minute to watch. Yes. There you yeah, go. Give a look at it. Dean, are you next after me? I, I am. Um Selena Gomez. Oh, they're gonna say Celine Dion. And I was like, good Jesus, pick. No. Good pick. Good Selena, fucking pick. Selena Gomez and Chef Home for the Holidays. Um, it's I believe it's on Netflix, uh, but it's uh, based I think out of the Food Network. Uh, she is making it, it's a series. There's four episodes where she's having uh, famous chefs come in and teach her how to cook. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about you, but but uh, you know, I I sometimes enjoy cooking shows. You know, just kind of watch. It's one of those. Like, it's the same. I, I enjoy watching like the home improvement shows. Shit that I can't <laughs> it's shit do. You'd like to do, but and you'll never do. Right. But like you'd like to fancy yourself. Like maybe someday, or maybe if exactly. I pick up enough knowledge, I do the same shit. I'm like and they, and interesting. They, they make it seem but, like, so I'll never easy. Do right. And then you take that concept and put the cleavage of uh, Selena Gomez, and My it goodness. is it it is a a a Christmas miracle, a beautiful bounty of of bosom. I never noticed until season three of Only Murders in the Building. I was like, Selena Gomez got some mm-hmm. got some stuff going on. And Rob's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, her boobs are huge. I'm like, I've yeah. never really noticed. Like I don't and, like in this but I'm episode like, she was, that I watched. A lot watched. of big sweaters and shit, but I, like there was one date scene <clears throat> in season three where she's and I was like, holy fucking mm. shit! Look at her go. Brother, I tell you, Selena Gomez and Chef Holiday. Uh, uh, what what did the chef's tits look like? <laughs> I, and they, she she did not have <laughs> cleavage showing, oh. and uh, well. and I didn't see the other two uh, or well. other three chefs. But <laughs> even if she even if they would have been on. It, it's it's hard not to take your eyes off of Selena Gomez. Okay, um, good enough. I, good enough. I I I don't think so. Uh, I don't think that sentence has ever been sp- spoken ever. That you just, which one? You, what do the chef's tits look like? Tits? <laughs> Man, yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll tell yeah, you what. Really you if me, anybody if anybody's been listening for 169 episodes, uh, that if you if you if you call in now, right. Call her 10. It, $1 million. Shoot us an email. Shoot us Tell us if you've ever said that. I'll tell you what. Selena Gomez, chefs, right? You mm-hmm. get me titties and meat. You can't go wrong. Let the record show I didn't say them together. The word All and right. was between You're not them. Allowed. You're not but, allowed. But I did it correctly, and titties and meat are always good combos. Oh, yeah. She, 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 the, the, the one episode, she's cooking this roast. Man... The way she grabbed that meat, she, like it, it's so tender, mm. and she like she really like put put some like you know tenderness and love into to that meat. And by the time uh, it's over, it comes out. By the time it comes uh, out, it is hard and 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 beautiful. And man, oh man, it's something to Lovely. behold. Mm-hmm. You, you all really should check it out. All right. Okay, Nick. Um, well, yeah, next on my list, I, it's, it's hard to uh, come up with anything else, right? Uh, next up on my list, this one is from 2020. Did you guys see Jingle Jangle, a Christmas journey on Netflix? It is a Netflix original movie with Forrest Whitaker and, uh, Keegan Michael Key. Uh, really hmm. cool movie. Forrest Whitaker is, and, and Keegan Michael Key were 
partners in a toy company. Uh, Keegan Michael Key ends up taking his idea and profiting from it. Meanwhile, was that Force idea Rickers like a doll left... with one googly eye looking at the other wall? <laughs> it, it, it's something like it's not exactly that, but it's 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 similar. It's akin to that. Uh, takes his idea for a toy invention, and meanwhile, Forrest Whitaker is this kind of eccentric, crazy guy that he's he's lost everything, you know, because of this. And uh, really cool movie, just uh, very interesting. His granddaughter ends up finding uh, some something he's been working on, and it's like a. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like it is a Christmas movie. It is a Christmas movie. Yeah, okay. it's um, think of like the greatest showman. It's like a musical, like an over the top fantastical musical kind of thing. Really, but with the acting and like um, you know, a mostly black cast and like everybody's just incredibly talented and so good. Um, Did you yeah, say cat it, or it, cast? Cast. Okay. <laughs> yes. The, well, I, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, the, yeah, you there is a you know, the, there's a, a lot of African American uh, actors in it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's I, I mean, they they do an incredible job. It's really cool. Um, I don't know who really you cool. know produced or whatever, but yeah, like I said, we saw it a couple of years ago, and when I was this is one of the ones I forgot about until I started thinking about it because I'm like, man, there's like new stuff is pumped out every year, and I'm like. What are some ones? Another, you know, there's uh, if we if we do honorable mentions, maybe I'll just do mine real quick. Like Ooh. Klaus was one for me that I was like I initially what had a it? list, but Klaus, it's uh, a it was also oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, was it Klaus? Yeah, yeah. Klaus? I Klaus. thought it was Klaus, but uh, Netflix. No, no, it's, it or, is Klaus. Uh, the one he the what he's thinking of. It's the cartoon one. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's Klaus. Yeah. But it was a Netflix okay. movie, same deal. But yeah. this one crept in because I was like, oh, yeah, that was the one that was like a musical. And like, I really liked a lot and had, you know, key in it and stuff. So, um, but yeah, really, really cool movie. If you haven't checked it out, Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey is what it's called. Hmm. Uh, came out in 2020. And it's, yeah, it's like a full length two hour movie on Netflix, a Netflix original. Uh, very good. Very good. Good mix of comedy. And, you know, like I said, musical, there's songs in it and stuff like that. And really heartfelt storyline. So I like that one out. Out. Yeah. I normally don't so, like stuff that you like. We're talking right. about or, yeah, or say. Right. right. I'll tell. I'll make a deal with you. Right. Now. You watch mine, and I'll watch yours. You watch Jingle Jangle. I'll watch Violet Night. Oh, that is because, not what I because... thought you were talking about. Okay. And I was <laughs> still on board. <laughs> yeah, I, was say, Jingle Jangle, you. I was like, I, didn't, I like you like Violet Night so much, and you, the way you explain, it, I was like, I probably don't like that, so I'm not even going to bother. But right. I will. I will. I'll watch I'm Jingle interested. Jangle. I'll check. And then when we get together, we'll talk about them, and then watch each other masturbate. I love it. Let's do it. All right. And that will be our gift to each other. Brian. I like it. Who will uh, you be I masturbating had... to? <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, had Brian, to I... I didn't realize you were still here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that Klaus movie is, is on my list, Nick. So that's uh, I I it's it was actually on my list of all time favorites as well. We talked about priors. It's, this is a solid movie. I yeah, wasn't sure about well, this. I stumbled across it a couple of years ago. That is the one. <laughs> that is the one um, where he is, went into the town as the postman, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right. That, so I, that yeah, I agree. That is. I actually just watched that for the first time last year. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it's just a different origin story of Santa yep. Claus. He's no J.K. Simmons does the voice of Klaus. Norm Macdonald, the late great Norm Macdonald, is in this. Jason Schwartzman is the main character, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, just this, just great, great animation, great storyline. Just like I said, just a very interesting take on Santa Claus. It's like it's you know, it's just he's a real guy, but he's somehow it becomes sort of this uh, this mythical type. You know, character portrayed in I this. Mean, so just very, you, very good. If you think about it, it is uh, out of a lot of the origins, it is one of the most similar stories to the actual story of, of St. Nicholas. Mm -hmm. St. Nicholas was, uh, I, I believe he was a priest, but he did the same thing. He would, he would go around to the village um, children and and leave them presents like that. So it is it actually, I mean, obviously that's, I could go into much more, but the idea of it is very similar to that cartoon. Very good. That's great. Let's go check it out. 
That's my five newer right. things. Go ahead. My fifth one. Last one. I don't have any honorable mentions because I really don't like new stuff. <clears throat> so um, I was listening to this podcast um, where probably the 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 sexiest trio of, of guys wearing uh, Santa hats and some pretty kick-ass Christmas sweaters are, are talking about, like, you know, kind of nerdy stuff, but, like, Christmas nerdy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and if... It sounds while, intriguing. I, it is. I got a boner while watching it. Whatever it is that you're describing, uh -huh. if I were the listeners, I'd check it out. I think everybody should. Or specifically, um, if I was a non-listener of this show, I would go <laughs> check it out. <laughs> Yeah, this is good. Uh, <laughs> hold on, let me let me look up. Um, the one guy, like, there's a there's an there's an older bearded gentleman who's who's, um, he just he extru like just he, he is the he is the manifestation of sexiness. Um, and the 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 younger uh, character, um, he he is like he is like vibrant and 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 full of just. I, I think it's what sex appeal would be if it was a pencil, but it, it, it it's really good. Um, mm. Mm. Well, I to see what, uh, what right. convincing idiots <laughs> put uh, that on my gravestone. <laughs> the sex appeal of a pencil. <laughs> Here lies Nick Schaefer, father, husband, the sex appeal of a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> you get the spray paint that on there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So yeah, yeah, this year's Christmas uh, special is 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 my number wow, five. Look at that! Awesome. I would awesome. not disagree. It's been good. look at that, boys. We mm -hmm. made the list. It's been yep. good. There you go. I'm sure, we'll make others as well. Did you, have, did you have any honorable mentions, Nick? I just had uh, Klaus written down actually, um, but yeah, other than that, uh, we covered everything that was on my list i i had one it was arthur christmas from 2011 so james mcavoy did the boys the here the so basically foot? no oh. uh another animated movie it's basically this isn't it, there's a, no there's a santa claus <laughs> that's uh passing down to the next person and arthur christmas is i think it's one of his kids two kids <laughs> So Arthur Christmas is kind of the nerdy kid that's trying to. It's just a very cute movie. I want to go. I won't go to the the the, the, the try to explain the plots of it. But uh, Arthur Christmas from 2011. I I hadn't watched this. I don't think ever until last year. Just kind of looking for something different, and really enjoyed it. And it's another one I would recommend you watch. Um, on an annual basis, yeah. as well. And it's not necessarily on my list, but this just this evening I did watch. On Disney Plus, there's a Diary of a Wimpy Kid new Christmas special that came out just this year. Um, really cute. So it's if you like the Diary Diary of Wimpy Kid movies or what have you, it's like uh, you know computer animation. If I shit in my hand and smeared it on your television, would you watch it, Brian? Listen, it's it was a, it was a cute <laughs> story, very good. So it's like an hour long. It's a good watch. If you want something different this year, it's good. It's it's a new it's a it's a fine newer Christmas special that definitely has some heart and good moments and things as well. So go check that out if you're uh, a diary. I, of I do Wimpy have Kids one more fan. honorable. I was gonna say I, I I I remembered a uh, uh, honorable mention that I actually did just watch for the first time this year. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what was it? Fred Claus. Oh yeah. yeah, the one with Vince Vaughn. That was a good yeah. one. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Vince Vaughn. Um, I, I like a lot of the movies either because of his co-stars. Um, but you know, Norm went and picked that one, and we watched it, and uh, it's, it was actually pretty good. Yeah. I enjoyed I that mean, one. It, it's got Paul Giamatti, so like, can't, how mm -hmm. bad can it be, right? So, well, and obviously, uh, it, you know, one of your main guys too, Kevin Spacey, is in that movie. <laughs> A, gl a glowing moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dean loves when he can see Kevin Spacey work. He just loves yep. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, for a more wholesome approach, um, 
because you know I, I like to think of all different types of people uh, for for you know and 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 including people and and um, there was uh, there was a, a Netflix original that I saw a couple years ago called A Christmas Wish uh, that was actually mm. pretty good. Um, so was like I said, the other one was from Netflix too. But it's kind of one of those things where you kind of wonder what you're getting into with some of the originals. Christmas Chronicles was another good one. Uh, but the Christmas wish was this, this young boy that like, you know, he had this paper route and he was, you know, work at saving up all his money, you know, trying to get something for, for Christmas, get something for his mom and dad and all that stuff. And then, um, you know, he, as the, the winter months get colder and colder, um, on his bike, he's just freezing his limbs off. And if only there was a better way. And then he calls up, um, some good friends at uh, located in Carrollton, Ohio, named RPM Bike Shop. Uh, in fact, he calls them up at three three zero eight zero eight seven seven nine two. He gets himself a fine, not only just a fine, the best that the market can offer: hmm. electric bike from RPM Bike Shop. And before you know it, he's breezing through his paper route. He's getting the gifts for his parents that he always dreamed of, and he's doing it in style. If you don't believe me, you can go see what style he was riding in. You could get one for yourself if you go to their Facebook page. Type in RPM Bike Shop. They're the ones located in Carrollton, Ohio, like I said. Look at the pictures of what they have to offer you. You can call them up, or you can go to their website, rpmbikeshop.com, and you, too, can be able to ride in style on your very own perfect electric bike from RPM Bike Shop and be able to provide all of the lovely gifts for all of the loved ones in your life this holiday season. That's right. If you're not sure what to get somebody, maybe an electric bike is in their future as well. RPM Bike Shop has what you need. So give them a shout today and let the fireworks fly this holiday season. Time to steal Christmas. That's naughty! Christmas is over. Christmas dies tonight. <gasps> but Santa. Santa? Santa. Santa? Who the hell is he? Might be the real Santa. He's choking. He's just. Santa's gonna eat through these guys. Getting started. I don't wanna kill you. Come on, sweetie. We wanna keep you on the nice list, you know. Completely out of control. Get ready. No way! For next Christmas. It's the last Christmas. None of this don't believe. <laughs> Violent Night. Yours to own on digital and Blu-ray. So, those are some of our favorite things. Um, let's mm -hmm. talk about some least favorite things. I'm going to start it off right now, if you guys don't mind. Uh, this is, is your something, face? This is something... All, all no. of Dean's jokes in the prior Christmas episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Both things irk I mean, me, I, right? I like that you Dean's only said jokes. You, 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 you only put them into the Christmas episodes. <laughs> Dean, I'm going to leave mine. You have 169 gonna, episodes to, to work with. I'm going to leave mine more broad. Dean's jokes mm. and my like own face are not pleasant things that I like to experience. However, mm. um, this one thing. Okay. I have a short list. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I have a hard time complaining about Christmas because I do truly love it. I really do. I love everything about Christmas. And I love that I'm that I have so many like friends and family in my life that I get to celebrate Christmas and stuff. I appreciate a lot about Christmas. I absolutely it's my favorite time of the year. But if I had to pick out a few different things about Christmas that I don't particularly love. The first one is a newer trend that I don't particularly love. And it's inflatables. Mm. Okay. Okay, here's my thing. If you have yard inflatables and you have two is the max, two is the max in a home you can ever fucking have a full ass home with property. Two is the most you should ever have. Okay. You don't need seven. You don't need every different one that you can buy. You don't need to add a new one every year. Two is, is actually two is borderline too much. One I can deal with. Okay. One with the proper, you know, also accompanying lights and other decorations. I can deal with one if it's accompanied by things. Okay. Mm. I can deal with two. I feel like if you have two, you need definitely. If you just have one, that gives me the signal that and no other lights or anything. That's like this. These are my Christmas decorations. This is what I'm able to do. Fine. Okay. 
if you have two inflatables and no lights, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is not this does not count as decoration. I'm giving you a pass with one, two. That's ridiculous. I've seen people with like five to seven inflatables in their yards. Yeah, and I don't care if you have lights. Looks like they're just being attacked by Christmas. That is insane. That is too much shit going on. And I like, you know, at the end of the day, again, take it for what you will. If you're listening to this and you have a ton of inflatables, Christmas, the fact that you're decorating for Christmas at all over nothing is better. Mm -hmm. It's better than nothing. That's great. Mm -hmm. But it irks me to see any more than two inflatables in a yard. It's just too much. It's gaudy. Mm -hmm. It's, It's a lot. So Christmas inflatables has become a popular trend. Yeah, it's cool. That's that's nice. Have one, two at the max. Do not do more than two. I don't care if you live in a mansion. One on each side of your house is good. Did you know that Flip Wilson, um, before there was like a, a, a Viagra or any sort of like uh, pills, he used to have, he had this procedure where he had this dick pump installed to where, like in his testicles, he had to pump it up by hand to get his uh, penis erect. Who's Flip and Wilson? It, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's, That's a well true story. Nick's time. Is it that a true story? I don't know the fuck. It's I've never heard that story. name. He was talking Flip about it on Howard Stern. Uh, Who is Flip Wilson? Flip, Flip he was like Wilson a 60s and 70s before. comedian. He talked uh, about Nick. it. Okay. <clears throat> on Howard Stern. Dated. Yes. yes. Before he died. <laughs> Double dated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who is Flip Wilson? He was a comedian <laughs> who had a variety show in the 70s. Yeah. Or late sixties, uh, early seventies. Um, yeah. But yeah, he was talking about his turn. He, uh, well, Nick was talking about inflatables. I thought I'd, I'd enjoy. Duh, born subject. in nineteen eighty-eight, millennial Nick. <laughs> Get with it. You don't know about Flip Wilson? Was on Flip Wilson Stern. Just like, Those are the two oldest like, oh, things. Boy. Like, in a, yeah, like Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, on the boy. Howard Stern radio show, Flip Wilson. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. So, okay, who's next? I, I get your point, Nick. I, I, yeah, I could see, I could see your point with the, the, especially if you have a, if you have a smaller, like an average size yard. You know what I mean? If you have an yeah. average size yard, and I, I can and... say this confidently because we're not big, right? We're not yeah. uh, a big pop podcast. Um, I don't want to you know, discredit Brian's undercarriage, but we as a podcast are not big. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I have neighbors down the street. They've got, like, they rent, like, part of a house, and they've got, like, fucking five inflatables at their house Mm. for Christmas. And they had five for Halloween. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, you only own half the property. Or you don't... It's like Christmas fighting each other. You don't own Mm. any of the property. You rent half of the property, and you have a fuck ton of inflatables. Like, like I said, at the end of the day, you did something. You don't think people that can't afford to buy a house should have inflatables? (laughs) Nick... I Do you know how much inflatables that... cost? How about take fucking three of those inflatables and pay for next month's rent? Jesus Christ. Like, mm. that's insane. Anyway, I'm done. Go ahead. So, right. Moneybags Nick is done. Uh, Brian, is there anything you want no, to No, I'm encouraging them to have more money by buying less inflatables. <laughs> then maybe they can afford a house. <laughs> so, so a lot. you're just mad because cheap. you drive by in well, probably a Bentley or whatever you're driving these days. <laughs> And you drive by and see the poors up there trying to have fun with Christmas, and yeah. and, and it upsets you. Using the rich man's air to inflate yeah. their trash bags yep. to make their fucking Christmas decorations. When mm. I'm out there putting out my LED lights, mm. it's mm. insane. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, you don't put them out. You pay a, a, a company. Well, to come sure. And, and yeah. 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 My pool boy is also a landscaper and also a light fixture hanger, so it's 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 a nice little thing that you know I like to you use all like, year round. You just you just like watching him work, don't you? I do. I sure do. <laughs> you wear the tight little jean shorts even in the winter. Get up on that ladder. Go ahead. <laughs> but Mister Schaefer, it's so cold. You get up in there now. <laughs> Miguel, I'll I won't tell you me. again. Good. Get up there. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm just screaming at the pool boy slash. Light hanger slash. Yeah, he has Go ahead, a, a very angry uh, no, erection. This was not on my list originally, but I'll kind of play off of Nick's thought of as far as like you know what you see at Christmas time and in and, and trends and that type of thing. So I when, once Christmas season hits, I love it. I mean, I really do. I mean, I love everything Me about it as far as 
Me I too, love Dad. seeing. I love decorating. I love the lights. I love having lights in the house. I love seeing the people's lights. I love going out to bars and having and restaurants and having all the decorations around. Like I love all gifts the, on the show, but you know whatever. Well, <laughs> I like to, you know just even you know cocktail names, having fun Christmas Eve. Theme, all everything about love it, I love it. I love it. I love tales. it. But I, what I don't love is when I see it at like Halloween. As Christmas creeps up more and more, like around okay. Thanksgiving, I get it. I when's don't... the cutoff? Like, like where, where, when is, when is it supposed to start? When are you comfortable it should... with it? The day after Thanksgiving. Matter of fact, okay. Thanksgiving Day. You, you give it to me when I see when I again, as I mentioned before, when I see Santa Claus yeah. in, the, in the in the Macy's parade. Macy's. Yep, on Thanksgiving like that, Day. Yep. That's it, dude. It you are be, my fucking it's, dad. It's, it's, it's Christmas from there on point. <laughs> yes, I don't want to see. The I don't want to see. Santa any comes out. Shit. It's Christmas. So, yep. So, it. so, so, what? What is supposed to be the decor? Is just regular fall decor from? Yes. From uh, October twelve o'clock th- noon yes. when Macy's ends, and you see Santa. It's Christmas season. So November first right. to November all decor. We'll Turkey twenty second. Pilgrims leaves, pumpkins. Okay. Hay bales, corn stalks, all the harvest shit is is. I love seeing all that. I mean, honestly, that's nice. I love seeing all that stuff <laughs> after Halloween, right? And but I don't want to. Very short. You know, uh, uh, it is very short. Man. It's like it's only a few weeks. But how much do you need for fucking Thanksgiving? Like it's, it's not even like it. That's, first that's, all, that's one of the beauties There's of no Thanksgiving. fucking mascot except for murder and genocide and shit. And, There's no and like, turkey, ma- right? Like, yeah, it's not. I mean, Thanksgiving's kind of a fake ass holiday. It's just a day to like. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I run around is, and just throwing uh, blankets on people with smallpox on them. Sure. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving is food and football. It should be John yeah. Madden Day. That's that's just right. what it is. Yeah. 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 I want to see inflatable inflatable of John Madden. Maybe yeah. that's it. I like that. Ooh, I like that. With a, with a, with a, tur- with a turkey, <laughs> every, with a multi A motion sensor with a, a car drive by and it goes boom every time. Yeah, a turducken. Yeah. yeah. Be there great. you go. I love it. Love it. So that's it. I don't like... So I, 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 How about a John Ducky? Yeah, I like it. Stuff your I told John, you guys I walked into the drugstore around Halloween time and they had they literally in the same... Right next to each other. They had a witch and a Santa Claus. That's mm-hmm. not even a joke. Selling the decorations for Halloween and Christmas right fucking next to each other. I'm sure. like, this is this is out of control. I don't like. Are that we going to talk about the elephant in the room here? Who's really What's to that? blame for this? Who's really to blame for the bleeding through of these holidays? Tim Burton with mm-hmm. a nightmare before Christmas. Ah, there you go. He blended the two holidays, and now people have lumped together Halloween Town and Christmas Town, and yeah. now. We're just going, well, it's so close together. Well, it's he, he also, it's he also put, thing. doesn't he put uh, uh, Helen Bottom Cardum, Carter in uh, in his movies, right? His wife? Mm-hmm. Yes. Typically. I well, mean, so, not anymore, so there, but yeah. Right, but but he used to. So, I mean, he, he's doing it there. He was blending horror with boners, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you get those too much. It's kind of like when you were yelling at your pool boy. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, I haven't got to complain one fucking bit. Go ahead. So anyway, All my right. next one is actually. No, no. Um, I'm going to go ahead with just another. That, I'm going to go just ahead with another. That, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with another. I'm gonna, fucking God. Christmas songs. Fuck you. Anything. Santa Bruce Claus Springs is coming to town. Santa yeah. Claus is coming to town. First of all, you're going to oh, get us to kick off YouTube. Did you say Bruce you, Springsteen? You yeah, I did. How fucking uh, actually fuck, dare you? Fuck the boss. And fuck him singing Christmas songs. Wow. Mm. Spoken like a true vagrant. You hate the boss. Man. You hate the man. Wow. Whatever. The, Bruce You're Springsteen. You're so cool. Anarchy. Pff, whatever. It's not anarchy. <laughs> I actually enjoy uh, uh, a nice common rule and and, 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 and nice um, nice things that oh, doesn't have a... a note. That's not punk rock. Fuck <laughs> off. That's ridiculous. Oh, you know, <laughs> somebody that sounds like they're, they they have a giant fucking mouthful of just gravel uh, trying That's to sing. That's what rock and roll sounds like, sir. That's okay, what rock then, and roll then sounds keep like. It, then keep it on your shitty rock and roll albums and don't put it on my fucking Christmas uh, station. That's I all disagree. I'm saying. That, 
That is a good version of Santa Claus. It's not. Out. Absolutely. Yes. It is Hallmark. Yeah. It is it, Santa Claus. Well, luckily, it is, is, luckily, is legal Claus, for you two to be wrong. So. Mm. <laughs> Santa Claus I is coming to town. Y'all been mad. Oh, how many of y'all been good this year? Oh, that's not many. That's not many. Yeah, that's good. You're Clarence proving Clemens. my point. Clarence, you're you proving Santa Claus my fucking point. Saxophone this year? It's great. The banter. It's Paul Stanley banter, which we love. Mm-hmm. It's it's it, it is it is up there it is with the I heard some of y'all like vodka and orange juice like I'm right here that <laughs> oh that's not many that's not many it's the same thing like it's like it's great it's an it's aged out piece of shit rocker <laughs> trying to to collect as much fucking money as by by knowing that if he if he did one Christmas song in this shitty probably in Des Moines. Uh, mm. That that he could that he could make money. What do you it, have against our listeners in Iowa? Wow, so what did Iowa ever do to Dean? I am. They let they let Bruce Springsteen sing that stupid song. That's what I have Man. a problem with. Wow, blast him! All right, okay. blast him. After we Nick just Quirk. praised the Christmas con- Chronicles, who yeah. had by the way uh, was was it or was his his uh, guitar player was in the movie in the jail scene. As a matter of oh, time. I, yes. I will, uh, I, hold on, wait, yeah. wait, wait. If you're going to make me defend it, I am not talking about the band. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, I, you do not speak the, ill of Max Weinberg. The, correct. It is the, is the equivalent of Rush. I am not complaining the band. The band musically... You the talent that carries the entire band. You just don't like yes, that. Yes, the voice of, <laughs> of it is is garbage. I, I don't like Getty Lee's voice. I don't like Bruce Springsteen's voice. And I, spe- I especially don't want either of them defaming baby Jesus by singing wow. Christmas music. Well, Man. I think we've all been convinced that Dean is objectively wrong on this point and the rush point. Yeah. So anyway, moving on. Uh, well, Brian, Stephen is, a, is an avid listener of this show, and we apologize. Yeah. Mr. Uh, he's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. His boss yeah. is the asshole. Hmm. Okay. Terrible. What else you got, Nick? Terrible. Uh, next hey, you look up on like my list, somebody's drunken ant at this point. Next up on my list, I'm going to go with uh, one of the least favorite Xmas things. Probably this was not on my list before, but I, when when we were talking earlier, um, probably Dean's take on Bruce Springsteen has got to be <laughs> one of my least favorite Christmas things. It's just. It, it, it is in it is in bad taste. It defiles the Christmas season. Um, I I just I can't. I'm shook to my core. Like I just don't understand. Like it feels very Grinchy. But you know how like the Grinch movie was all tongue in cheek and like a cute movie, and he learns his lesson at the end. I just don't have faith that this guy's gonna learn his lesson in the end. And I just feel He's like not. um I feel personally assaulted, and I feel like the Christmas season. And the the very spirit uh, of Jesus's birthday has been defiled by Dean's Man. take here tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on my list. Uh, Dean's wow. take oh. on <laughs> on Santa Claus by Bruce Springsteen Spring 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 is now made my list. That's up there. Wow. I don't agree with you, but goddamn, it, I have to, I it, it goes you. straight to the top. It goes straight to the top. <laughs> hmm. All right, Brian, you're ne- no. That's my actual next pick. Brian, go ahead. Okay, that's good. I heard a lot of people saying this movie in 2004. It's a good movie. You got to see it. It's a good Christmas movie, whatever. I Elf. watch this thing and I'm like, Elf, I like. Elf grew on me big time. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it has some big stars in this movie. It should have been much Elf? better. No, Elf is a good movie. No, it's not Elf. Oh, okay. Uh, this I'm mo- like, this okay. movie. No, no. This movie had Tim Allen, Jamie Lee Curtis. Dan Ankroyd should be good. Christmas with the cranks. Yeah, but it's a terrible, uh, yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's not good. Movie. No, it's not. I agree. I went and saw the theater. Yeah, I'm just like I'm like okay. So they're they normally decorate. Then they're gonna go visit their family, and the fact that they're going to go visit his daughter, their daughter, she's not coming home from Christmas, so they're gonna go visit. The townspeople flip out because they're not putting up their own Christmas decorations, including this Santa Claus on the roof. So they they go nuts and really get angry at the crank. And then they, they decide, nah, actually, you know what? We're going to stay home and we're going to decorate anyway. I'm like, what is the... I, I, to this day, I don't really understand Strange the whole movie. point of that movie at all. It's like, it, it is this rings of 
we could use some extra cash for exactly. vacation or exactly. something like that. So just one of the worst Christmas movies, if not movies of all time, in my opinion, <laughs> Christmas with the cranks. Really? If you look it up on, on, on Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. it is, it is one of the <laughs> lowest rated Christmas movies. Ever. I see. I see your awful movie, Brian. Yeah. And I will up you the worst actual Christmas movie called A Christmas Story. Um, I was asked Man. the other day, I was asked the other day why I don't like that movie. And I didn't have like a specific point. I think it's everything. I think it's, it is the, um, the acting is poor. The, the look of it, I understand that they were kind of like a 40s and look. I, 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 Actually, yes. like, hold on. May I yeah. pause? Yeah, and yeah. I'm not, I mean, bit aside. Mm -hmm. What, like, is it the this child bit. I you don't just, like that movie. I won't watch no, it. No, I know that. I know, no, I, I mean, like, bit as me giving you a hard time about, like, the okay. stuff. Like, actually, I'm not trying to combat you about the movie. I legitimately, like, wh who? The children. The acting, um, the, the children acting is The children is bad actors. Too. I don't like children actors in general, but those kids were particularly bad. Um, the mother is is annoying. I like her in a lot of other things she's done. Like she's a Man. good actress, but was she supposed to be like whiny and like annoying and and like a bad actress in that movie? Um, the father was only the halfway re deeming part of it. Like he was entertaining of of any of the. He stole any scene he was in. Yeah, but it, it's not hard. Because like everybody else was acting out of a, couldn't act their way out of a goddamn uh, wet paper bag, um, and then the hmm. tone of the movie, um, I, I get that they were supposed to be in like the forties, but like it just looked, it looked old and tired. Um, the, uh, the 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 plot itself is just dumb. I get the idea that he was supposed to be like a fantasy kid, like I kind of pop it off the fantasy deals, but it, it just didn't, it just didn't, didn't do it for me. I, I, I didn't like the plot. I didn't like the, the writing, the acting, the cinematography, whatever you want to call it. Just everything about that movie. It irks me ever since I was a child. There's never one time from when I was little, when I saw it to now that I've ever watched and gone, you know what? Okay. Not bad. It's just bothered me so much for all these years. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Go back and watch like the last half hour, 20 minutes, half hour of the movie. Well, Brian, the, the, that's the thing the, is, is the, I, what's, what, what makes it bad is like, I do watch it. Like when, when every, because I'm not going to like turn off and let everybody else. It's on it. TBS 24 so, hours a day. Yeah. On so I do. <laughs> so like, it's not like, oh, there. I haven't seen it in 20 years. I saw it last year. Hmm. I see it every year because, like, everybody else loves it and watches it. So I do in, uh, suffer okay. through it. So, right. so yeah, I, it's not something I just have a bad memory of. I watch it every year with everybody else. I just don't like it. Okay. Yeah, like I said before, this, this, the, the scenes at the very end when the dad is so excited. Yeah. To give his son the ultimate that thing gift. that he really wants, and he's been like putting him you off. Know, okay, so I'll give you that. Yeah, over give there. You know, what is that, that over there? His dad scene. is so excited, like yep. all like just giddy. The dad is yep, so I, giddy. I will give you a, that is a to good give scene his son when the kid gets the uh, thing. I'll give you that. Yeah. One. Um, yeah, but like when he takes it outside and like actually almost shoots his eye out and hurts himself, it makes me so happy every time. <laughs> Man. I think this is rooted in your hatred for children more than anything. I don't think it has <laughs> yeah, anything to do with so. the movie. I think you just I hate so. kids. No, yeah. I, um, I, that's... Yeah, Dean every year asks like, his son, like, what do like, you really, really want for Christmas? And he makes it a point not to get it for him. Actually, that's like every year. Brian. I get it for him, and then I break it in front of him. <laughs> the the like the the wife or the the mother she's one of my like I I just feel like it plays so well off of his character like that he's so stern he's and he has no time for whatever and that she's that very motherly like she's yeah. stern when she has to be with the soap in the mouth and stuff but she's very like you know she's that's her baby her boys and she too. you know whatever yeah. like 
And um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, I know a lot of people that like that is the that is the quintessential Christmas movie, and it's not that for me. Oh, it's not on. even. It's not a top five. But at the same time, every time it's one of those ones that like every time I watch it, I appreciate it. I'm just like it's. I don't know. It's like the opposite because I'm like. I just feel like it's really well done. Like it's, you know, and, yeah. and the fact that it was made in like the eighties and made to look like it, like, I feel like it translates well. Like you feel like you're in the time they were in wanting you to when be I in. And even the kids, like with the, the schoolyard stuff and like, it's all mm-hmm. very like, it's silly. Cause you, it's, it's a child's, it's a childhood no. through an adult's eyes. And it's like, yeah. kind of, it's funny. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah I, hmm. Even, even as a kid, I tried to like, like it's one of those where like I would like I wouldn't openly say that I disliked it because everybody uh revered it so would much. ridicule I, you like this. <laughs> right, right. So I didn't. Like I just kind of pretend I'm like, okay, it's on, I'll, we'll watch it. And then as I got older and realized that, you know, I wasn't wrong hmm. and rarely am, that I was mm-hmm. able to come out and You and, know what? And, I think that this is. Uh-huh. Uh, what I'm trying to relate to you is like, I feel like you were hyped mm-hmm. up on this or it's been, it's, it, I think it's part, it's part, you don't particularly like it, but more part, the fact that everyone loves it. And yeah. that's me with like certain movies where like super troopers, everybody was like, so funny, fucking hilarious. And I'm like, it has its moments, but it's not that fucking funny. And like, therefore, I kind of hate the movie. Like, I hate Super Troopers. I think it's mm. stupid as shit. Because, yeah, I, don't, like, I don't know if it's that. I, I, I think it's... I mean, it could be. People but, but... people are like, it's so super... Remember that? Super Troopers? <laughs> and then, like, I'm like, yeah, I've seen... It. And then, like, when I finally watched it, I'm like, it's not that fucking good. Like, I mean, I so appreciate then I you being it. able to point that out, but, like, I I don't know if I'm able to say that. I mm. Again, it might be something that I okay. can't think about. okay. And, okay. and, and kind of analyze in myself, but I can't. I can't say that at this point. Okay, I do like for me too. No I do like the. Here. Nope, <laughs> I do like the fact though too. I love the fact that that movie, the leg lamp, is become has become a symbol of that Christmas. Is cool. I'll yeah, give and you that. Even, maybe even more so in this area because certainly the the actual house is right. in Cleveland. Although they, the movie itself is set like in Indiana or something on Cleveland Street. That's but the weird. leg lamp has become a symbol of Christmas, definitely around here. I don't know if that leg that lamp is, cool. I, I, is, is prevalent in other parts of the country or not, but definitely it is around here. When I see a leg lamp in a window, it makes you smile to this day. I just have a small one, but it's one of my gifts I would like to get is a, is a full-size can, leg lamp I want to put in the fucking front window at Christmas Can we cut time. out just it. that part with you admitting that you have a small one? I, I need that leg for some lamp. editing things leg later. Lamp. Leg oh, lamp. Okay. Yes. Yes. Anyway. All right, Nick. What else you got? Any any, any other items on your? Uh, on your things list? that bother me. Uh, oh, the next one uh, that I don't like is also a decorative thing. Um, mm. This is a this that is shirt. a very minimalist <laughs> approach. Uh, fuck off. Uh, and it is light projectors. The when uh, people put up. Oh really? They, they, okay. So I don't mind light projectors. Right by the like the snowflakes like, and like, things on the side of the yeah. house. You mean? Yeah, or they just it projects light patterns on the side of the house. Yeah, in lieu of Christmas lights. Okay. Ah, uh, there again. Okay, there are there lazy. are. Yes, there are parameters for this. If you are an old person by yourself and or or an old couple and you can't get lights on the house, I give mm. you a pass. But mm. also, you don't know what podcasts are, and you're certainly not listening to this. But if you are a younger person. Who just simply puts a stake in the ground with a projector globe and projects lights on your house with no added ambiance? You're lazy as fuck. Like I'm sorry. Certainly like, trying. A you gotta do bit, something. Do something. You hmm. again. All of this is with the preface of if you are doing that instead of leaving your house dark <laughs> in December, that is better than nothing. However, I have hmm. one window with lights. Don't half ass around me. the edges. Don't hmm. half ass me. It's fucking Christmas. Like that's part of the. Don't you watch Christmas Vacation? Like that's part of the thing. The hassle and the aggravation and the getting the lights to light. Put some fucking lights on your house. Like what are you doing? Like mm-hmm. stop doing projectors only. Again, if you have a projector, 
And you don't even have to have lights on your house. Let's say you have a projector and lights on some windows, lights on some walkways, maybe some candy canes, other guard decorations, whatever. That's fine. I get it. But just put a stake in the ground with a globe that projects lights on your house. Like, no. Fuck. Like, mm. no. Again, able-bodied, right? I understand that is a nice, convenient option for seniors or people that don't want to get on ladders and, and put actual physical lights and, you know, put the hangers on their house and, like, on the gutters. I get that. But if you are able, do that shit. Mm. You, guys, you guys haven't been over to my house uh, lately, have you? I don't talk to you outside of the spot. You don't contact me. I don't, I don't hear from you. <laughs> no, I don't, no. <laughs> we write you on a constant basis in our group chat, first of all. <laughs> and you respond like every third no, day. No, I've not seen your house. <laughs> no, I, I, I got new blow-ups uh, the, of the Christmas well, blow-ups. Well, I, I would imagine that, yes. Yeah, there's only two. It's, oh, it's Christmas! A, blow, oh, blow up! Yeah, oh, like uh, yeah, 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 blow up! I got you. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I I do have the other ones, just not outside. <laughs> no, it's it, it's Wonder Woman pegging uh, Turbo Man. It's delightful. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Are there light projectors to go with it? <laughs> it's coming out of her. <laughs> of her Actually, <laughs> that is a that is a out of his mouth. <laughs> visual display. That is it is like you beautiful. You've gone above and beyond. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you got anything? Uh, yeah, I got a few more things. I'm just kind of watching the time here too. But uh, I want to. Uh, we got just, time. Some week. All right, I got week Christmas specials here. A little bit. I'll start there. All right, so. Um, weak uh, Frosty the Snowman uh, to me is one of the weaker. I, I'm going to blend the two here in one, one, and one, one in response here. Frosty the Snowman is weak, and Rudolph has a lot of shitty behavior in it. So, like those couple, those mm -hmm. couple Christmas specials, you know, Frosty is this. I have Frosty just, on my list. Very weak, you know. It's like yeah. okay, it, it you know, kids dumb steal a hat, and it, it's, it, the the song is still fun. I love, I like Frosty the Snowman's song. It's fine. Yeah, you know, the scene he melts in the greenhouse is awful, terrible. Uh, it's just not, there's not much point to it. I don't know. And then Rudolph, everybody is sh we are shitty to Rudolph, including his own father and Santa himself is a fucking asshole to 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 Rudolph or. Looking different and being different, and uh, he, it re, you know requires some odd characters to embrace him, to you know bring him around and so forth. It was, uh, but I don't know. So just those two specials, it's almost even for me to where it's like you know Frosty not interested and Rudolph kind of makes you angry for eighty five percent of the of the special until finally. <laughs> People respect Rudolph for being able to well, use his unique uh, physical abilities to save Christmas. That's a, you know? that's how yeah. I came upon this podcast. I I was uh, made fun of and ridiculed until uh, two other uh, outcasts took me in and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. brought me onto the podcast. So and then yeah. you were canceled for your take on Bruce Springsteen's <laughs> coming to town. Right, that's right. Damn. <laughs> well, I'm going to continue on Brian's thing and and go with. And I know I've done it many episodes about many different times about, uh, I think we did it for Halloween and Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. yada, yada. But goddamn Charlie Brown, those kids are awful. <laughs> Fuck those kids. Not just kids, everything and everybody, same as Rudolph, is just mm -hmm. garbage. Charlie Brown's an idiot. The kids are dicks. All of them are just, where are the parents, Right. Where yeah. are the parents? Yeah. I mean, truly, it, these it, kids it, around. I get what they're doing at the time to be like, oh, like pers like it's almost like a perseverance story. Like, try to like keep doing the right thing, and then like you'll redeem yourself. Like, I get where the heart of it is, but also it's teaching all the wrong things. Right? It's like keep proving yourselves to these fucking assholes, and then and, keep like, trying to be their friend. Yeah, it's it is yeah, and like try to it's it's that yep. story. Mm. Of, Keep trying to mold yourself to their their means. Keep trying to make yourself what they want you to be. It is ridiculous. It's all of Charlie Brown is that. Yeah, and it's again, just garbage. I get. Every, I'm not trying to cancel Charlie Brown. It's in good garbage. Spirit, 
But like it, it is the Again, wrong at the end. Every just time. Like today's pro, uh, Rudolph. At the end is where you get the like the heartwarming, right? Yada yada. Yeah, mm-hmm. Another like, yay, you saved you our fucking ass. Now we like you. Thirty five right. minutes of of shitty kids being shitty to to each other. Yeah, it's like we're nice to Charlie Brown at the end. That they they were oh, redeemed okay. somehow. No, you're not fucking redeemed. You're you're yeah, being mean. Awful. Yeah. Yep. Again, yeah. the only kid is Linus. Like I said before, Lin- be Linus. That's it. Everybody else is a fucking idiot or asshole. That's right. Yeah. Other than Linus, yep. Linus is Linus is consistently Linus is pure good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was good, yep. dude. Yep. Be a Linus, people. Be a Linus. Yeah. yeah, that's right. All right, Nick. Anything else? I do. I have my. This is my last one, and I'm about to. I'm about to take the cake here. I'm sorry. Hmm. My least favorite thing about Christmas. You came around ever. with Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> all time. <laughs> they made a sequel to Jingle All the Way, fellas. I don't know if you know this or not. Mm. It was straight to DVD, and it was Jingle All the Way too. And that it is featured, class for me. And it featured Larry the Cable Guy oh. as the lead. Now we have had many conversations on this, and a lot of it is like you know my love for Jingle All the Way. Obviously, my shirt, the Turbo Man, whatever. At the end of the day, can either one of you with a straight face tell me that it is okay, whether how how you feel about the original aside, <laughs> that it is okay to make a sequel to an Arnold Schwarzenegger-led film and make your lead man Larry the Cable Guy? Mm. Is that okay? No, is that absolutely fine? not. Is that acceptable? Is that no? You no. could you could have done a Hallmark movie with Bronson Pinchot. And you still should not do a sequel with Larry the fucking cable guy. Correct. Correct. Now, here's the deal. I'll be the first to tell you, all jokes aside, Jingle All the Way was not even, was not a, first of all, I'll tell you this. It was not enough of a classic or a hallmark in society to have a sequel. <laughs> you don't need, no one's at, not a single fucking soul is asking for this. Sure. Not the most diehard fan of Jingle All the Way is asking for another one. Mm-hmm. Let's just say I want Arnold in it and Sinbad, as fun as that might be. I'm not asking for that. Why are you force feeding me a single or a sequel to Jingle All the Way? Not featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger. You could have named it or anything else. Was it doesn't matter. Like it, it, it's ridiculous. And like, so we go through this have thing. Have you seen it? I have never, and I vow to never. It is. Mm. I will take that to my grave. I vow to never. Lane well, do has you know tried. the plot. I'm just La- curious about Lane, the plot. Yes. So Lane has watched it, and I think fifty percent of it. Fifty percent of it is maybe he like kind of likes it. Fifty percent of it is that like it's. Actually, that's not fair. Thirty percent of it is he kind of likes of it. Likes it. Seventy percent of it is he wants to give me a hard time. So he has seen it. He goes, I think if you watched it, you might. I said, you don't understand why I like Jingle All the Way. It has nothing to do with. I mean, not nothing. I enjoy the story of like the dad going out of his way to try to make his son's Christmas perfect. That actually is the the heartfelt thing at the core of it that I love the most. Sure. However, a big fucking part of it is Arnold and like what he means to me and when I saw it and the nostalgia and like all that stuff. So that to me is is just like he's like, I think if you watch it, you'd like it. And I'm like, I, I, I can guarantee you I would not. There's nothing redeeming about this this movie that I want or that I, you know, have any desire to be a part of. So, um, I, I, I don't know. I just, I've never seen it. I vow to never see it. First of all, it was straight to DVD. Why was it not good enough to at least, well, I mean, it was, it was Larry never the good cable enough guy to be, is a character. Yeah. He doesn't even sound like that. Right. That's, that's ridiculous. If, Apparently if, if Dan, if Dan would have been himself as an actor and done it, um, maybe. But he did yeah. the character of Larry the Cable Guy for it. It it, it just it, it makes no sense. Yeah. It's 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 exactly like 
it's almost like they took it the pre- they, they they did they took the premise of it because he was like it's not even a turbo man it's a different toy and it's right. a different like they they took it it's like one of those home alone spin-off things or whatever like american pie movies that weren't one of the first three like it's just they took the idea and were like uh oh, we'll just pump this out so anyway obviously as you guys know i'm passionate about jingle all the way i love jingle all the way and i hate to my very core, that there even exists some semblance of a sequel to it that doesn't feature any of the spirit of the first one. It just bothers me. So that is my number one most hated thing. Mm-hmm. I hate it for you, sir. And oh, I don't thank think you. We... I appreciate that. And I don't think, uh, Brian, you have anything else? Uh, one of the worst created Christmas specials of all time you could argue is it so bad it's good is it so bad that it's only good if you have a special event to Mm -hmm. enjoy it Mm -hmm. the star wars holiday (laughs) special if if you're to to me it's absolutely if you're gonna sit around and just try to watch it on your own and try to enjoy it as a brutal something that's uh remotely entertaining or good or anything or Christmassy. It's I don't know how one can even barely say that there's much there at all. Obviously we had our we had a fun event watching it together and making yep. fun of it. It was a whole event. That was even that was tough to watch. <laughs> it was hard to get through. It was it, 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 but it still it was fun. But I'm glad you phrased it that way because I was yeah. saying I was gonna put on my list but I was like I can't really. Can I really put it on my list because there's a level of enjoyment to it? But you yeah. you phrased it perfectly. Not for the right reasons. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. It's it's real. It's hard. You need friends to do it. Like you can't just like sit down and enjoy it by yourself. It's not like I, that kind of no. Thing. Right. Some people can, and those people are not. I'm not us. one of them. That is for sure. Or no, us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. And it, that, that's it. That's that's my main. Well, I think that's a uh, my main stuff. Perfect one to end this uh, this segment on. Yeah. Yes. Very good. We have done it. We have talked about cheerful things, and cheerful things, things that bother us, things that we love. And one thing that we do love, I know the one thing we are unanimous in loving is uh, tattoos. Our yeah. tattoos. Not is tattoos. Our tattoos. And go check out our final sponsor to get, to experience your own uh, uh, holiday joy and, and creative love and so on and so forth. I'm really reaching here. I'm just going to go into the, the promo <laughs> read here. So Golden Heart Tattoo and Norton Try at Golden hard. Heart Norton on Facebook. Uh, find them online, goldenhearttattoos.com, or give them a call at 234-706-2982. They will not be on your least favorite uh, holiday uh, uh, list of items. I know that for sure. Um, make yourself a New Year resolution. We'll get some new ink in 2024. Go check out our friends at Golden My resolution. Heart Tattoo. Absolutely. Nick, sir, yes. can you take us out, please, on this uh, yet, yet another joyous holiday extravaganza of the Convincing Idiots podcast, to. sir? Well, yes, sir. ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of another Christmas episode of Convincing Idiots, and you might be asking yourself ah, where do I go from here well I can tell you you can lead yourself into a positive new year 2024 as it is and the Christmas season by joining your friends on all their favorite social media accounts convincing idiots link tree is where you will find us go to Google type in convincing idiots L I N K T R E E. find convincing idiots like follow rate subscribe, review, all that shit. We love it. It helps us out, and we appreciate you. We appreciate you in another uh, fantastic year of this of this podcast. We would also like you to find us on our website. That's convincingidiots.wordpress.com So be sure to go there, and if it's not too late, go ahead and find yourself some fantastic merch to buy the loved one in your life who also obviously loves convincing idiots. So, 
for this Christmas episode of Convincing Idiots. I am your millennial Nick. Ho, ho, ho. I am the Zenial D. Millennial Santa, Gen X Brian. Have we convinced you to include us in your holiday season this year and let the fireworks fly in your life? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yo, yo, yo. Hi. This is Millennial Nick, along with Gen X Brian and Zenial Dean. Hey, if you liked that video, which we really hope you did, you should like and subscribe. That would be great. I drank an Aunt Marge from last year. Woof. That shit is fucking hitting. Mm. Oh, yeah? Fermented. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no yeah, man. This. I was like halfway through it and I was like, this shit slaps. <laughs> like, that fucking thing is like, <laughs> like, that shit is, I feel it for sure. Yeah. That's the key right there. Don't got a big budget? Buy some beer, let it sit for a year, and then fucking yeah. drink it. Woof. There you go. There you go.